ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of The Grit Theory. We are so glad you found us today. This is John Mayo with Aaron Robinson, and we are thrilled that you are joining us as we explore how challenge and adversity can be changed into opportunity. And don't forget, if you like what you hear today, please subscribe, share with your friends, and we love your comments. So without further ado, let's jump right into another episode of The Grit Theory. Welcome to the Grit Theory with Aaron Robinson, myself, and John Mayo. Hello, John. Good morning. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. Up and at them. Yeah. Beautiful day. It's starting to become uh, spring here in uh, Carter Springs, and we love this time, don't we? We do. I forgot what green looks like. <laughs> <laughs> People say that about coming here anyway. It's uh, generally browner, I guess, than other states, but uh, yeah. worth it. Yeah. Oh. So many more benefits, but you know, hey, let's not get going on our our no. our uh, state pride here. But uh, we don't need more people moving here, anyways. So. That's true. Yeah, it's not that great. It's, <laughs> it's, it's terrible. <laughs> you get snow through spring. It's muddy. It's dreary. It's terrible. You only get some sun. All the stereotypes. <laughs> yeah, it's six feet of snow out here all the time. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, well, hey, well, thank you for joining us, everybody. All our grit theory fans out there, we are going to get into an episode today, which really near and dear to uh, John and I's heart talking about uh, the grit of life. But this specifically, I think, really encapsulates, gives us a really good word picture of what it looks like to be gritty, one, but but why we really do it, why it's not an insane, masochistic kind of journey that we're on, you know, mm-hmm. as people from the outside looking in. Why is it uh, that we, we push through difficult things? What is the benefit today? So, um today we're going to be getting into an article that we found um the title of the article is called embrace your inner bison and run toward the storm which seems very antithetical to everything your mind would tell you to do run into the storm Mm -hmm. i mean it's like to me there are certain things that seem like not just a paradox but seemingly like antagonistic to this the human journey like if why would i do the thing that makes things worse as we, as you get, as you think about something. Um, and this is, we're going to get in a little bit more into the heart of this because this is not something that we say flippantly, like we're trying to be some tough guy or something. There's actual real m- m- uh, methodical thinking behind it. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like, what do you think about that, John? Yeah, I agree. And it's also fun because back in episode six with Chet Bailey uh, called into the storm or push into the storm, the, we kind of touched on this principle as fruit from that conversation, right? Like, well, yeah, you, you just have to embrace life's adversities and there's benefit through that conversation to get upon that string more and, and look at the analogy more fully today. I think it's going to be fun, but uh, yeah, we, we are very adaptable creatures, human beings, and we are a product of that, which we repeat. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I agree. There's, I, I believe there's a method. I think it's well proven over numerous infinite examples. And uh, I'm I'm excited to jump in. Absolutely. Well, so with that said, I'm going to read a little bit of this article just to give some backdrop. Mm -hmm. I want to give some uh, credit to uh, the author, Aaron Barrett. Uh, This is, this is a great article. I I just really enjoyed reading this. I'm going to read a piece here. Okay. There are a few symbols that represent our past and the American West, quite like the American bison, better known as the buffalo. The official, the official mammal, quote, of the United States is often used throughout, throughout North America in official seals, flags, and logos. In the Native American community, the bison is revered, especially among the Plains Indians who consider it a sacred animal and religious symbol. As a history major in college and someone with specific interest in the historical West, I've been long fascinated by the buffalo. One of the best books I've read in years is American Buffalo in Search of a Lost Icon by Steve Rinella. The well-known podcast host and star of Meat Eater on Netflix authored a compelling and comprehensive history of the animal and the incredible impact it has had on our nation's history. Skip ahead here. The symbolism of the majestic bison heading directly into the storm is very fitting and an interesting reminder of how to confront life's obstacles. We all know that the worst thing we can do when confronted with a major challenge in life is to run from it. And then he writes, don't run, don't avoid it, don't hope it goes away, take it head on. And and back up, 
He said, preface this statement with one of the most fascinating characteristics of the bison is how they react when a storm is coming. And again, don't run, don't avoid it, don't hope it goes away, take it head on. But as human beings, we often don't do that. Why is that, John? Well, I think that we are wired to pursue comfort in our natural state, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you, that's my opinion. What, what's easier, doing the comfortable thing? And, and it kind of makes sense if you think about it in a survival perspective, where like you have calories that are scarce, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to go just run to run. You're not going to put yourself in uh, unnecessary risk because there's no medical attention to help you if you're out in the middle of the, middle of the wilderness by yourself, mm -hmm. right? So there's kind of the, I'm going to do what's necessary to survive and not more than that or to maybe like be comfortable as possible, like have more enough food and things like that. But why would I do more than that? Risk injury, expend calories, things like that. So I think that it's like, not... no, you're talking like nomadic man, you know, yeah. like however many hundreds of years ago this was, or yeah, I'm, lo I'm looking at like, why would we want comfort over yeah. facing the storm? And I, and I think yeah. it comes from our history, right. you know, but I don't think we've adapted well mm -hmm. to modern civilization because there wasn't a laziness then perceived or you die, right? Like <laughs> you would do the hard things because they were necessary. You just want to take on unnecessary risk. And, but now where the hard things are, have changed in necessity, we avoid them because you can eat three days worth of calories in 10 minutes, you right, know? Right. So it's like, we're, we're good. We have <laughs> heating and air conditioning and we, we don't have to worry about our baseline survival for the most part. And, um, well, you know what, We're John, up. So John I, what's strange to me, and I think this is the, the insidious nature of life mm -hmm. where we don't realize we're actually in a storm. Yeah. So when you say to me, like we could consume three calories in 10 minutes or whatever, which is true. I mean, it's so convenient to totally just mess up your health, right? But people think that comfort is the same thing as health or the or same thing as um I don't know, happiness or whatever you want to call it. Like it's a good thing. It's a good thing. When, when they know, I mean, when they know this is not really what they want, this isn't truly freedom. This is not exactly health, right? But there, there are so many competing elements that are trying to steal away the thing that we really want. Well, what it, you, you just mentioned something that I think is pretty central to this idea because <clears throat> there's two competing systems I see. Mm -hmm. There's the comfort versus lack thereof and the benefits of each, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's the concept of freedom versus being domesticated or lack of freedom, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there's a cool analogy that we can pull out in a second, but freedom is is dangerous. It's costly. It's difficult to maintain. Mm -hmm. And it inherently puts the benefit, the benefactor of freedom into greater adversity, right? Mm -hmm. They're responsible for the decisions they're making. They're responsible for the consequences of their actions. They're responsible for making those decisions in the first place. That's daunting, mm -hmm. right? So, or at least it can be in many cases. So I, I see there's fair weather and there are storms and they can be a small, like I was thinking about this. If you're communicating via email with someone and you send off an email and maybe the situation's a little testy and you see their response pop in on your phone or whatever. What's your reaction? Do you kind of dread opening it? Right. Mm -hmm. That's a micro storm. <clears throat> but if you're like, oh, okay, they responded. I need to go. It's like, don't even think, just yes. click the dang email and read it. Yes. There's, you a, know? there's a great book Push in. that I'm sure some of our listeners have, have read up. Uh, by Brian Tracy called Eat That Frog. Uh, right. it's, it's, it's a great, it's, a, it's just a, a, a book on how to do the hardest things first because of how much his, his premises, the, the energy it takes yeah. to be mulling that over in your mind. Oh my gosh, I got to do this thing. I got to do this thing. And then, you know, and it steals away from everything else. And because you didn't push into that one thing, you've actually wasted time. It's made the storm longer when it could have been just like quick email uh, okay, well, this is going to suck and, and get through it. Eat it head on. And just be done. And, okay, move on with my day. So it's behind you. Which, what, it's, so, it's so true. Uh, in, a, in a book called Radical Candor, highly recommend the read. It's fantastic. 
one of my favorite quotes from it, and uh, I'll make it G-rated, is if you have to eat a poop sandwich, <laughs> don't nibble. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you have to eat it, get it down, right? And um, I say that to my kids, too. Like, yeah. <laughs> when, they're, when they're just like, uh, it's like, what's the fastest way to eat a poop sandwich? Or the best way to eat? Eat it as, yeah. uh, as fast as you can. Yeah, don't even – just swallow <laughs> Don't chew it. You know, just get it in. So it's behind yeah. you, right? <laughs> right? Just tackle it head on. And uh, Rory Vaden, who's a, a best-selling author, I'm not certain what he wrote. I'm pulling this out of the article we just mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm -hmm. Introduced this concept of a pain paradox, which is exactly what we're talking about. It's uh, the, the pain paradox conceptually is – the short-term easy leads to long-term difficulty, while long-term difficulty leads to long-term easy. And, and I I do believe that's true. You know, in our pursuit of making something simpler, easier, or avoiding a problem, mm -hmm. we're making our lives so much harder. And we're really turning a small issue into a gigantic problem. Right. You know, like it was just a little molehill I could kick back in and stop down. And now I have to climb it for four days to, pr or at least in my mind, right. We've mm -hmm. made this giant mountain of an issue out of nothing right. because we start dreading it, making the anxiety and avoiding it. Right. It ha this happens a lot with, this is something I appreciate about you too, John. This is something that we often do is there might be something that is annoying to you about another person, like, and I'm talking about me because I can annoy John. I know how to do it. I, I've learned the secrets. We do this mutually to each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, but the best thing you can do, instead of like secretly harboring this, like, like this guy's an idiot, you know, like, it's just more like, hey, by the way, let's think about this. Uh, what do you think about it? And then it's more like, oh, that wasn't as big a deal as I really thought. Like, you mm -hmm. get through it. Uh, this, this happens in uh, any friendship in, uh, and relationships with bosses, employees, with uh, in your marriage, you know, you guys can think about the last fight you had, maybe yeah. you know, with your spouse, and go, man, it, when you guys actually got to the work of getting through it, it really wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. It wasn't days like you had it in your head, like this person knows they're doing this, and this is going to be a fight the whole way. It's hey, the, this thing I didn't like that. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know that. Oh, well, well, don't do that anymore. Okay, well. And they, you know, it's not that simple, but it's it's generally a few minutes to get through that kind of thing. But we trump it up to be like this bad, crazy thing. It's not that bad. It, it's so true, and I and I think that's the avoidance of confrontation or perceived confrontation, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, who am I? Like this marriage, partnerships, friendships, mm -hmm. right? This, this is very true. And you and I have these conversations all the time, and it's not confrontational because we just, hey, I have this perception, Aaron. Mm. Or this assumption. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's right. Right? Mm, and, and like, is this true? Is this what you want? Right? Because in just getting ahead of it, if I'm starting to feel frustrated or hurt or confused by something I'm perceiving or assuming, mm -hmm. I, I, it could be 100% my problem yep. because I don't know what you're thinking yep. or we've not discussed it. Yep. So it's like, hey, buddy, can you help me understand this specific point? This is what I'm perceiving. This is what I assumed. Is that true or not? And then it's like, oh, wow, I was all messed up. But now I know that in 30 seconds from asking you, instead of allowing it to spin me up, get frustrated and build up this big thing that if I keep swallowing could be, you know, cause a big blowout between you and I, a big fight or a significant issue or just unnecessary friction. And it's like, no, we just, we just talk about the things as we think of them. These are, and I'm bringing this up because like, it sounds like, less of a, a cool story to talk about some some big giant storm really most of life is the little storms right yeah the little things that like oh there's a cloud on my day what are you gonna do about it and it's like practice for the like it's not always going to be like the big c word or something you know that's mm -hmm. that's rare what mostly ha and i'm talking about like cancer versus confrontation which yeah. is more daily and we we uh i think we've become anemic with because we we don't know how to walk into storms as it as it were we we do what what I want to point out in the article is we choose a different animal to act like you know there's the buffalo <laughs> that walk into the storm yep right and and to that uh, I won't steal the thunder if you mean yeah. to read it but yeah to that I think it's so environmental right so how about this actually we read it real quick and then and then I'll show yeah, it yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So there's the buffalo that walk into the storm, and then there's the other animal. So I'll just read this piece here. Um, 
the reaction of the two animals is an ish interesting... Oh, sorry, let me back up. Okay. But that's not what the bison does as far as procrastination. Like, this is what they're referencing. Mm -hmm. Rather than waiting out the storm or running away from the storm, the bison charges into the storm, taking it head on and running right through it. This has the effect of reducing the amount of exposure to the storm. On the contrary, cows have a different reaction. They run away from the storm, receiving the brunt of the storm in the process. The reaction to animals is an interesting juxtaposition, a free to roam bison versus a domesticated cow, the wild and free animal versus the captive cow. Two animals, both from the same biological subspecies with two fundamentally different instinctual reactions to the stress of the storm. Every day, we are all faced with challenges, both personally and professionally, Sometimes these challenges are the equivalent of the big storm that the bison takes head on. So there's these two choices, right? So the, the bison says, storm. The best way to get through a storm, they, they agree. I think the, <laughs> the good thing, the good news is in the bison mentality is the storm's actually shorter mm -hmm. the way they handle it. Yep. Which I think we would all agree with. <clears throat> I don't want the storm to be as long, real long. Okay, good. Bad news. In order for it to be shorter, it's got to get harder first. Yeah, you have Which, to embrace it. You're you have gonna to embrace, attack it. Yeah, embrace <laughs> the suck, as we as we say, um, and push right into it. It's going to get harder, but they know that as you push, it, the harder that the storm's coming at you, the faster it's moving over you. Mm -hmm. Versus the cow... Re there is if we walk with the storm it's less severe but of course the cloud is falling the whole way we i've been that person before mm -hmm. and let the cloud just you know rule over a day or a season worse yet right yeah um there's a choice you got to make what what do you want do you want a long storm or a short storm well and it's interesting because in this conversation, storm equals adversity, right? They're mm -hmm. synonymous in what we're talking about, right. um, difficulty, problems that we're facing. And <clears throat> it's interesting because if you study the two herds, um, side by side in a blizzard, uh, the casualty ratings is significantly lower on the bison than the, the cows. Uh, and and I, I just love the the concept of the free to roam bison, bison versus the domesticated cow. It, it's just this beautiful juxtaposition because when as long as there's been cities in abundance of resources you know I, I think that that's where the comfort and you know ability to live more lavishly has sunk in i don't think there's anything wrong with creature comforts or anything like that but now we're in a position out of necessity where we get to choose what mindset we want i really think that this is more a systemic mindset or outlook on life perspective than just like a, a flippant choice, right? You have to develop the type of person you want to be. Do I want to embody the spirit of a free, um, resilient being? Or do I want to be dependent on others for security and comfort mm -hmm. and my circumstances for security and comfort and not know how to handle when the good graces of my circumstances run out? You, John, like, when I'm thinking, I, I have seen the casualties of of not understanding this concept. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a casualty, right? You've been a casualty. We've all not done this the right way. But what you're speaking to is kind of a preparation mindset. Like, mm -hmm. you're, you're embracing a mentality. But here's the key with that. It's timing. Like, Noah didn't build a boat while it was raining, right? Like, you don't get friends. When it's raining, yeah, you get friends before the storm comes. If you don't prepare for winter in the spring, the next winter you die. The next winter, right? right? Like, exactly. you, well, at least back back then, like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There is you absolutely. This is like life or death. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm I I when someone comes to you and they're in the storm and you realize they never, didn't do any preparation, it's 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 hard to do anything for them. Yeah, You know, it, like if, if you're listening to this now and you're concerned that you don't have that family support, that friend support, that, um, that mentality that you've built to get through these things, um, 
I would I'd be very concerned if I were you because uh, let me tell you something if that's just a universal reality the storm is coming if yeah. it hasn't come already a problem's going to hit you it absolutely will I, I I do think though that even if you're not prepared right mm-hmm. and you're you're kind of in this woe is me state being afflicted through some adversity yep that it's not hopeless you mm-hmm. know like there is you have a choice on how you're going to continue reacting yep right and. You can still build the boat of Otis where it's not fun. You know, yeah. you're, <laughs> you're building it while well, it's raining on you, but you have a choice. You and and to come to it real quick, it, it's interesting because if when, when, and you have this bison and a cow and they're in a the field, right? They're hungry, they're cold. If they were thinking as human beings, right? And let, let's look at this you have two people in a field, they're, they're backpacking, they're out, very different backgrounds. They're both hungry. They're both cold. One person has this take ownership of my circumstances and find solutions mindset. Mm-hmm. The other one is very lived a very comfortable existence and has ran from adversity. What do you think the thoughts they're going to be thinking in that place? If I had to, if I had to guess and pause it, the one who's used to find working towards solutions and owning their circumstances is going to be sitting there and saying, okay, <clears throat> this is not pleasant. How can I work to a position that allows me to put food in my stomach and get warm. Otherwise, how do I fix this? Right. (laughs) They're not looking for some savior to come help them. They're not looking for, they're not saying woe is me. Whereas the other person is going to be like, this is terrible. I'm a victim. Mm -hmm. Why is not anyone helping me? This is the saddest thing in the world. And just makes you sick hearing it (laughs) makes you sick thinking about it. And that person in a life and death circumstance is significantly more likely to die as they are singing the woe for me song versus the, I better get to work fixing this (laughs) song, you know? And and that, that to, that to me is the underlining factor. Are you going to choose to foster the victim mentality and choose to look for someone to help you out of whatever problem? Or are you going to say, Nope, this is atrocious. This sucks. I'm angry. I'm sad. Now what? Right. What am I going to do about it? Right, right. Yeah, it's the guy. It's the guy that you know. Like, I'm thinking of like the alien movies or the old, uh, the the old suspense or thriller movies. Like, mm-hmm. it's the guy that loses hope that's going to die next. I mean, that's like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's generally how they set it up, right? Yeah. Like, oh man, we're so dead. We're so dead. Yeah, no, you're dead. You, you know? are. You guys don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Don't be that character in the movie, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's so true. But it's but there's always a hero. And we want to be that hero where we're like, okay, this this situation sucks. Like we're not downplaying it. We're not we're not like creating some cognitive dissonance, like, oh no, everything is fine. You know, it's like we don't need that platitudinal thinking. We don't want to be that person that's like not even in touch with reality. Reality is it needs to be embraced. That's the opposite. Yeah, that and that's the perfect statement. Reality needs to be embraced. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think is another way of looking at this. When the problem strikes, you're going to embrace the reality that you have something to deal with, mm-hmm. or you're going to just try to avoid it until and hope it goes to away. It goes away, you know? Yeah. And that's where like, Hey, if you've not prepared for whatever difficulties life's throwing at you right now, they're endless. But if you're in this place of despair and you're trying to avoid it, like that's where earlier I was saying, I don't think it's hopeless for you. You just need you right now. You have a choice because we're talking about it. Am I going to keep avoiding this? garbage, right? Am I going to keep looking for someone to come save me or for this problem to magically just walk away and leave me alone because the universe is good and it wants me to be happy, (laughs) right? (laughs) Or, and and this is the the offer, I'd say, hey, if if you're in this rough spot and you're not prepared, take a look in the mirror, acknowledge that reality, take a look at your problem and find some incremental small thing you can do to begin pushing into it and resolving it. Yeah. Anything, anything. Yep. Even if it's a partial small solution, you can't see the solution at the end because it's too big and scary. That's okay. What can you do in some small way to incrementally make it better? Even if you have not slept or eaten because you're so messed up from this, yep. maybe the best thing you can do is just force a meal. Go get something fatty and protein dense and get in your body because within 10, 15 minutes after getting that in your body, physiologically, you're in a significantly better position yep. on how you perceive the world. So maybe that is the the insignificance of the step you need to take, right? Okay. I, yeah. I, I'm going to force myself to care for myself right now because I'm scared. I don't know how to handle the situation. I've been running from it. I don't want to. I'm in despair, right? I'm right. alone. Okay. 
I challenge the assumption you're alone, but maybe you are. Get some food in your stomach. Force it. John, like, this is, this is so good. Cause when, when you talk about the person I'm talking about, I'm talking to myself, like who has been in the storm and who's going to be in the storm. Mm -hmm. And I want to say to Aaron or to John, when you go in the storm, I want to talk against those voices and somebody saying, you know, this is happening because I'm a bad person or I'm not worthy or I'm not whatever, you know, yeah. and it's just like, you're just this negative crap. You're making the storm worse. You're just like, it's not even that bad. And you're just saying it's worse than it is. You're not a bad person. You're just welcome to the club. You're in shock. Yeah, exactly. But that, welcome to the team. We're doing this together. Well, that's where the preparation yeah. comes. And I think we owe some more conversation to what does preparation look like, yeah. right? Because a, a fun example, our septic system is on the rocks right now. Mm -hmm. That's a $20,000 problem. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. The second you start thinking about that, the reaction <laughs> for me, right? Yeah was to immediately extrapolate all the problems, all the loss of freedom, all the auxiliary things that happens that come with a price tag like that, right. unexpected in a bad way, yep. right? But then if you tell yourself to shut up and you simplify the problem, it's like, okay, well, me thinking about all this stuff doesn't help. That's when I can say, well, what's the next step? I need to get some advice from some professionals. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Let's evaluate. I'm... What, what do I need to do to begin preparing for that potential second and third order effects, right? I, I make the, you just take the first step. You call the professionals, you take a deep breath. Well, I'm not going to continue on some other pursuit that is now threatened by this, but I am going to take a deep breath and wait till I talk to the professionals, right? And I'm going to now say, what's the next step I can do to plan for this contingency? Yeah. I'm not going to worry about all the auxiliary things. I'm just going to bring it very close, very near to what I can affect today. And begin working through those things. And, and the second you tell yourself to shut up and it doesn't matter that that or this or this, it's like, hey, at the end of the day, simplification, right? All right. That sucks. It's going to cost some money. <laughs> We're going to have to figure out how to source that. The key is the key is like to not go one way or the other on the pendulum. Like, yeah, it is what it is. Correct. It's not more than it is. It's not less than it is. Like, I'm not, you're not putting your head under the rock either. Yeah. Like, oh, this will go away. You know, like. Don't do that. Don't ignore it, right? Yeah. But at the same time, don't say, oh, this is going to ruin my life. And Yeah, yeah it's like, not. You're going to freaking live. You're going to, like, I don't care how bad the situation is right now. You're, you're going to, you're still going to breathe. You're still going to get through it right now. Um, it, don't tell yourself that there's no way out. Yeah. It's just, <clears throat> there, there is a solution. Um, you just got to open your eyes to it. And, like, and the reality is, the, the helicopter could fly over you while you're drowning. But if you're, you know, woe is me, you won't see the helicopter even. You know, yeah. you, you got to get out. You got to snap out of it. Uh, absolutely. And it, it's kind of a humorous juxtaposition because in episode eight with the walkers, they, they, we were joking around about how uh, there's a bunch of people in the car and they were with Billy Walker's dad. <clears throat> and they're all at this really long line. It's like five minutes in, the light's still red. And everyone's like, oh, this is such a long line. And, everyone, and then uh, Mr. Walker is like, Long light. Yep. <laughs> and it's like that that's so it it's that's tongue in cheek and hilarious. But it's like, oh, septic system needs repaired. Okay. <laughs> it when you simplify things, it gives you a okay, it's less scary. I'm not gonna allow myself to turn this into a mountain. Even if it is, I'm gonna figure out how to start climbing it. Yes. You know, it's like we have this problem. So how the heck do we prepare? For whatever the situation may be. Yes. What can we do to, because it's a mindset, right? Yep. How do you foster it? Well, I'd say the, first of all, the bison to me is a great word picture. Like here are these guys, like if you see bison, they hang out in herds. That's what the, like if you see one alone yeah. and there's none for miles, there's something wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's they, a trouble. There's some, yeah, there's <laughs> something happening. Um, so I think first of all is surrounding yourself, not with just not with just other bodies around you, but bison. Like bison don't hang out with cows. Um, and I don't say that to mean like avoid people who don't think like you always. Like there's just going to be situations where you have to, family is a great example. Like we don't, not everybody in the family is, is moving the same way as a herd. I'm talking about choosing the people that are going to go through the storm because what you don't need when the storm comes is a bunch of people running around panicking. Yeah. Or have a tendency to do so. 
Um, <clears throat> all of our friends at some time have weakness, but if there's a gravitational pull to, hey, we all agree that when storms come, this is what we're, we're going to. Well, that's beautiful because the ba- you're, you're talking about your baseline character that's mm-hmm. being fostered and grown, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to be selective of your inner circle. Yep. You have to be because you're going to have days where it's rough. I'm going to have days where it's rough. Mm-hmm. That's the point of being friends with each other. Because our baseline character is strength, you know, mm-hmm. that's the goal. And that's what we're working to foster character, mm-hmm. these different things. So if you're hitting adversity, I've got your back yep. and vice versa, right? When your inner circle works to foster positive attributes, yes. then when there is weakness and it will come or when the storm or when the wolves or the problems come and threaten, you're not alone in facing them. And where you may come up short, thank God you have a good inner circle or I hope you do, right? Mm-hmm. And it, 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 if you don't mind, there's another analogy I kind of want to play with for a second because it's really fun. You, you said if the bison's out by itself, it's in trouble. Mm-hmm. There's this lie, especially <clears throat> well, in whatever circles it's prevalent, of like this alpha wolf mm-hmm. like mindset, right? Like be an alpha wolf, be a lone wolf. It's like <laughs> losers. <laughs> so in, in the 80s, there's a bunch of studies and they actually learned that the lone wolf is a wolf in crisis. Mm-hmm. It, they're they're typically young and looking for a pack to establish or old and kicked out to die. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, you're, you're not carrying your weight or you're causing too many problems. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. And so that, that creature is in crisis. It, it, it's not in a good place when it's alone. Um, the alpha wolf is in a pair with its partner mm-hmm. and they lead the pack as a fan, as a, as largely an extended family unit between that partnership of the, the height, the, the top of the hierarchy, male and female. So it's really an alpha pair. You have the alpha male and the alpha female that are completely synced and they lead this family in, uh, of wolves, right? Together. And so it just, it's a complete, and that's what was discovered through the study starting in the eighties, actually following wolves like, Oh, our perception's wrong. It's not the alpha wolf. That's this big, bad, crazy, scary thing. You're wrong. You're in trouble by yourself. (laughs) But if you put surround yourself and you create that tight inner circle of people pursuing a similar ideal and can encourage one another in pursuit of that ideal, then you have strength, you have balance, you have all these act like these positive things that come and and i love it because it's also such an attack on selfishness or justification of like well i'm this way or whatever (laughs) um and it's slightly tangential but it's directly related because you can't be that guy out by yourself and not be in some level of crisis and you and and if you're hardened to the point where you don't see the danger you're in that's where when the weather gets rough, you're going to start to realize really quickly, oh, I'm not in the best place because when I fall down, who's going to help me up? Mm. No one. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right. It, you're you're also I'm really exposed to being a victim. Yeah. I mean, there's there are predators out there. Like in addition to storms, there are foes that will that do want to take you out in this life, you know, 100%. And so I, I'll tell you what, the best way to fend off a foe is out in front next to you. I mean, that's, yep. <laughs> that's how you survive. And so that the bison get that, uh, as big as they are, like if you've ever been around bison, like they don't move, like you could drive your car up to one and they'd be like, they'll tow you your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like if they feel challenged, they'll just, yeah, they'll just trash your car. And yeah. Um, so they're tough, but they're not so tough as to think they can go it alone either. Well, yeah, because if they're alone, like that pack of wolves will eat them, you know? Yeah. It's interesting because this is such a communal thing. And I think we keep coming back to that. This mindset is communal. And I think it's yeah. I think it's because we are the culmination of what we do, Yeah. right? Which even furthers the culmination of how we think mm-hmm. or what we allow ourselves to think. Right. So like when talking about preparation... If I had to like, I'll just throw out three really high level thoughts on it. And let, like, let's look at that for a second. So I, when I look at preparation, I'm thinking, okay, <clears throat> who am I surrounding myself with? What types of thought patterns am I locking myself? And what am I doing holistically or physically 
to kind of gird myself up for the next challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, like how am I, how am I preparing for the next challenge? Right. So it's like the day, like when the sun's shining, the food is plentiful. There's no problems. There's money in the bank. I'm not in a fight with anyone. There's no foe on the horizon. How am I preparing for the next thing? Mm -hmm. What types of patterns of thought am I going through? Who am I spending the sunny days with? Mm -hmm. You know, good. Yeah. Like, like, like not, not taking advantage of, or um, I'm sorry, taking for granted the sunny days. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, that's a, that's a thought there to me. If you have a sunny day, maybe it's a gift to prepare for something that's coming and then not to be so not, not to be like so pessimistic about tomorrow. I'm not saying that at all. I just think, I think I, honestly, I think storms are a gift. It, that to me, the mentality is a shift from storms being this terrible thing. I think storms are testers. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard, I've heard it said that it's, it's the faith isn't created in the storm. It's, it's shown. Yeah. And to me, a, a, if a storm comes and you have prepared for that storm, it just kind of shows, Hey, this is what you're made of. And this is what you're not made of. So sometimes a storm can just create like, like a vacancy that you need to fill. Mm -hmm. like, wow, man, I was not ready for that. Like that really got a hold of me. Good. What are you going to do? You know, right? that type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And the storm <clears throat> will uh, eventually pass and then you can, you know, kind of assess the damages and go, Man, I was, I did not, uh, <laughs> the foundation for that house was not as good as I thought, you know, yeah. things got torn off there. It's okay. All right. Well, Don't want that to happen again. <laughs> it is funny because if, if I, I just had this kind of humorous thought, it's like, well, what if it doesn't go away? It's like, well, you die. <laughs> so assuming you cert you you're alive, you have hope to be able to affect these things, right? Yeah. And if you don't, well, it's, it's too late. You're fine. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's not your problem anymore. <laughs> but, um. So using the sunny day, yeah, then, to to prepare that mentality to get get things in order, more in order than they need to be. Yep, uh, not letting comfort let you swing back the other way and get weaker, rather gird what you already know. Yeah, think of how foolish it is. Like if you learn something, like let's say you don't have a savings account at all, right? Uh -huh. And then your tires get blown out. Yeah, and now you can't pay for new tires, right? As, as an assumptive metaphor, mm -hmm. you, you work it out, you get through it. You finally get the tires, whatever you're back on track. How foolish is it to then not take anything from what you just learned <laughs> to prepare for if your tires blow? Right, right. Right. So it's like, okay, thank us. That's behind me. All right. Hey, or did you start a savings account? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Glad you learned something there, but it, it's, it's, it's like driving, driving weeks on a donut. Yeah. You know, like, dude, that oh, was you gotta like, love it. That was a band aid. Yep. <laughs> Still band aid. No, no, not a solution. <laughs> it's it's fraying. And and it's funny because you talked about how the storms are a good thing. And and I think that's true because it's like <clears throat> why is the dawn beautiful? Because it just was dark, you know? Mm -hmm. Why is spring such a time of joy for people? Because mm -hmm. they just weathered winter. Yes. You know? If you're hungry, food tastes a lot better than if you just ate. Right. You know, that we, we're, we're meant to go through these cycles and seasons, I, I think. Yeah. And, and, and that's where it's like, yeah, the adversity can make you stronger. And I think that concept is integral to what we're talking about, but foreign to a lot of people. It's like, yeah, I welcome the next storm. Mm -hmm. Why the heck do you welcome a problem into your life? Well, of course I don't want it, but I'm throwing everything I got at being prepared for it. So when it comes, I'm going to learn and test yep. that preparation. And the other thing, because you're like, oh, we don't have to be overly pessimistic. And <clears throat> I agree. We can enjoy the weather. We can enjoy the positive parts of life. We can have peace and contentment in them. But it's really a matter of while you're having peace and contentment in them, don't forget the lessons you learned. Mm -hmm. if, if we can apply them and if we can put them into practice, then we can even find contentment in the rough spots of life yes. on some level. Yes. You know? And it's a more even filled contentment. It is. That's right. It makes both the sunny day and the storm better because mm -hmm. the sunny day is like it's tempered with th this sober judgment of this is a gift. Like this isn't normal to have sunny days all the time. You know, I'm talking about the perfect s situation, as you say, everything's mm -hmm. in order, you know, that's important to me. Um, but if, if I think that's normal, like I say, this is what I'm deserved, I guess. Like, yeah. Like this. So, yeah, you entitled, know, entitled, yeah, like, <clears throat> like, of course, it's a sunny day, because 
Um, I deserve, I deserve the sun. I deserve these sunny days. Like <laughs> you don't deserve anything. Yeah, you just get what you get. You know, and, and don't pitch a fit. Don't pitch a fit. <laughs> yeah, we're two dads talking here. Oh man, <laughs> all the things we said we wouldn't say when you're when you're dads, we just do it right away. But that sunny, the sunny days, like, hey, this is this. Is, you get this and enjoy it. It's a gift. It's absolutely a gift. Yeah. And then when the storm comes, it's it's not it's not terrible woe is me it's just it's another day well and sometimes it sucks and you know, walk through it i i do think that's 100 percent true but also that's the gift of a mature mindset in this concept mm -hmm. right because I, I think that's something you can look forward to like if mm -hmm. this is just like if i was hearing this i'm just like nope don't agree think you're crazy <laughs> it's it's because i've not seen the truth of it yet mm -hmm. right and, and that does come with evidence of it right. and, and that's where it's like okay well yeah if you're just being thrashed right now and you don't have this resilience you're not doing anything in your life to prepare for when things aren't peachy keen then it's going to be hard to hear this but but the truth of the matter is what can you do to start improving this situation who can you walk with that will actually help you walk through it and not just encourage you to keep throwing your life away or like being the victim right or trying to avoid the adversity and trust from those who walked before you and this is the power of having mentors which is a separate context wherever you are in life that it will get better if you keep pushing in mm -hmm. the only way that you can guarantee that's going to get better is if you like <clears throat> the only way that i think you can influence if it's going to get better is by pushing in mm -hmm. otherwise you can't guarantee that the problem's going to go away if you keep running from it it may last until you don't Mm -hmm. if you keep avoiding it it's gonna so, sometimes if you haven't prepared well is this gonna really really suck yeah it, more than it, need, it needed to be but hey you're in it okay so you're here you didn't prepare it's obvious what's the fastest way through it push through it and in the first thing you gotta do is really embrace the reality of the suck like don't avoid it don't put your head under the rock don't make it more than it is you just kind of go like this is really hard but it will end yeah. it has a finish line and, and it, it will end and, and looking at like the preparation how do you like let's say i'm sitting here it's like i want to be look at the bison the cow i want to kill the cow feed the bison <laughs> right like in myself right, right like every chance i smell that cow type of thought of like i'm going to run from this i want to avoid it i want to kill that and that happens all the time it's so easy with like instant messenger and remote working on mm -hmm. these things you're in some sort of a confrontation you get the messenger i'm just going to avoid it for three seconds no snap right to it respond right mm -hmm. like snap right to it read it and then think about your response if you need to take time take time after you've read it don't take time anticipating what you're going to read yeah. right and so it's it's kind of like even in, in the in, preparation comes in the micros right mm -hmm. in the the small things if you're like hmm, avoiding it comes in i'm going to do the best i can to deliberately jump into that right it comes <clears throat> So like that's one way I think you prepare. It's like don't underplay adversity either and justify putting it off. Tackle it immediately so that you can condition the response in the small things to be better prepared to act the same in the big. There's this concept in the military um, or I've heard in the military and I think it's big in sports too. I don't follow sports as much, but that when you hit, like when a plan hits combat, first contact, or like when players hit the field, right? They will immediately, like when their system gets tested beyond what they're typically comfortable with, they will immediately revert to their lowest level of training mm -hmm. and equipping. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you're not equipping yourself in those micro things with the messages or the small stuff or the confronting yourself on the inappropriate thoughts that are detracting from you becoming better, then how do you expect to properly respond to a foe across the table? Mm. or a life event yeah you know? it's so funny how the fundamentals serve you. Mm -hmm. you that you may you may have a lesser you may have a lesser style but the, the fundamentals will protect you if you get them really strong yeah you have but it comes from really looking back at a time when you failed and and you have to you have to agree that that was not good that is true you have to call it what it is, right? All the way, like to, to to paint it with a different light. Like 
I was a victim, or that was a weird thing that happened, or... Or it's a fluke. It was a fluke. I would rather... <laughs> I would rather look back and go, man, I don't ever want to feel like that. I don't ever want to fail like that again. Uh, that that was not okay. What, what am I going to do to not do that again? Dude, that takes courage, though. It does. Like, you have to make a judgment call. Like, that was bad. <laughs> right? Yeah. That was not good. Right. No. <laughs> right? That can be true of who you're hanging out with. That's scary. Yeah. Right? That can be true of circumstances that you've taken for granted are in. That's scary. Right. What are the implications once you own that? Exactly. It, you know? it, it, it makes it a lot easier to make the next decision on what you're going to do about it. Yeah. But it's also scary because if you're bound up in something and you know it's bad and you justify it or you, you're like, yeah, I know it's bad, but you don't acknowledge what that means, right? If something's bad, you ought to stop it. Mm -hmm. If it's not good, you ought to change the circumstances mm -hmm. You to work for a solution, mm -hmm. to make it better, yep. right? And I, I love what you said. You have to own that it's not good. That is such a crazy mm -hmm. thought, though, and I do think it's pretty countercultural mm -hmm. because what if that means you need to find a new job or what if that means you need to stop dating someone or mm -hmm. you need to limit your time spent with a friend you've had for a while because you're not good for each other despite enjoying each other's company, mm -hmm. you know, or you need to stop some personal habit. Like mm -hmm. that realization, how much easier is it just to live in denial and think, Oh, this is how it is. Or this problem will pass. Or this is someone else's problem, not mine. You know, it's wild. When you take like this kind of, you give yourself a, a, your own kind of physical yeah, uh, and go, all right, that weekend happened. How do I feel spiritually, physically? Yeah. Uh, how did that, how the, the goals I set for myself, did that help it or did it hurt it? This is a you in the mirror conversation. It is. Right. It's not a, it's not you having to pander to a crowd. It's like, what do you want? Let me look in the mirror right now and go, is this, is, is are these decisions helping me? right now in life yeah am i even making my own storm that i need to to push out of this and make ask the hard questions make the hard decisions yep. so i can get through this really not good such got a good season faster well and it's personal before it's relational yeah. like how can i lead my family if i haven't squared myself away some right you know like my wife is in trouble if she's relying on me for anything <laughs> anything and i'm a mess She's in trouble, right? Uh, I can't, and I can't help her out of a situation she's working in mm -hmm. if I'm a mess. Right. So it's like, I just love what you said. If you broke the mirror, don't have one, get one. Because <laughs> you have to look into it. This, this starts with the person, personal. And like, once you've put yourself as much in order and you've set your trajectory at an ideal that's difficult to obtain and you're working towards that, yep. then you're best positioned, not well positioned, but best positioned possible for your circumstances to help someone else that's near you. Yeah. You know, but until then it's like the blind leading the blind or the drowning saving with the drowning. It's like, good luck, man. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. Don't, don't hit it. Don't hang out in the, uh, I don't know what the military term is, but the med tent or whatever you guys call it. What do you yeah. call it? Don't, don't hang out. How about on the, like the sidelines, right? The sidelines. Yeah. You I know, mean, like, if you're injured, it's not a, that's not a permanent situation. You need no. to, Get rid of the bunny slippers. Yeah. You know? <laughs> bunny slippers. <laughs> the epitome of this, like, chill day, yeah. every day kind of uh, mentality. Yeah. Well, like, and, and think about the, okay, I want to embrace the the tackling the problems mindset. It's like, well, mm -hmm. how do you prepare? Well, if, if food's a problem and you know winter's coming, how do you prepare? You you plant your, your crops in the harvest and the spring and you hunt as much as possible, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, okay, if I know that some problem's going to strike and my car is going to need repaired or there's going to be repair in the home or a medical bill or something. How do you prepare for that? You get some money in the bank, mm -hmm. you know, how do you prepare just holistically to the best of your ability for all these things? I think you sharpen your mind and strengthen your body. Yep. You know, like if those are great analogies to look at for the concept of, well, how do I strengthen my body and sharpen my mind? Um, I think, well, simply put, I think that, putting yourself in physical adversity, like what, whatever that is, walking, running, lifting, sports, anything, hiking, putting yourself, forcing yourself into the circumstances helps build that store of resilience up. Mm -hmm. And then with the mind, it's like reading, challenging your own assumptions and who you surround yourself with. Yes. You know, I'm thinking, that's my thought. What do you think? I think, I think it's, it's amazing how some, 
how you can change when you look at the reality situation how you can make actually you can actually make things harder to get a better result i'm thinking right away of like the single mom like shout out to single moms out there that when they're faced with this very difficult situation some loser boyfriend or whatever took off Mm -hmm. and he chose the easy route to go and make even worse decisions whatever the the mom then assesses the situation this sucks I'm already having a living a hard life. Now I'm going to go to school, become a nurse or whatever those, those decisions, like I'm going to go to work and go to school, which is even harder because I, I want to get out of this situation and then have a, have a better rhythm. I like, that's incredible to me that, mm-hmm. that women out there can dig deep. I know men do it too. And this is, this is situation yeah. it's in my mind. It happens all the time. And we're also, we're you often know? confronted with it too. So it's like, yeah. a, I think, I can think of a handful of the, like exactly the prototype you just discussed, you know? So it's like, whatever the circumstance, absolutely. But, and that to me is like, well, when, when it hits the fan really bad and you no longer can hide behind the lie that things are going to go away, right? You can no longer hide behind the whatever. Mm -hmm. That's when you're confronted with that big choice and not everyone makes the choice to push in. That's right. And you see that too. So, you know, it's like a kudos, like, if your world just fell apart, your spouse died or left mm-hmm. you and you're left with a mess to clean up, you have a choice. Mm-hmm. And there's those that you just described who push mm-hmm. in and figure out how do I make this better for myself and for my children? And then there's those who don't. Yeah. And we don't talk about them because they're stories of despair and heartbreak, right? That typically end very, very badly. Right. And it, it goes back to, yeah, when the world's falling apart around you and you're not prepared, that's where you have the choice. And that there's so much hope in that. There's this um, there's this lady who was at a party and she was talking to a psychiatrist at the party and she's like, "All right, I have a question for you." Okay, he's like, "All right, what is it?" And he's like, "Please tell me that there's something wrong." He had, she had been sharing the, the some struggle she's going through. She's like, "Please tell me there's something wrong with me." Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Why do you want to know that something's wrong with you?" And she's like, "Because if something's wrong with me, I can work to fix it. Mm-hmm. If this is just how the world is." then there's no point in living. Mm. And it was so interesting to hear that story because it's, it, to me, it's antithetical to the lie of domestication, security, being taken care of, being a victim, right? Mm. It directly stabs it in the heart because if you choose the more dangerous freedom and choose ownership, right? And here like freedom is ownership of circumstances and working towards solution. Domestication is avoidance of problems in the victimhood mentality, right? Mm-hmm. If you choose the ownership mentality, there's good news for you. There's a way to potentially fix it. If you're a victim, you're at the whims of everything around you. There's no fixing it. What's the point? I don't know how long that storm's going to last. Yeah. If you're that victim. Like yeah. You could, as far as I know, you're walking with it. <laughs> and it could. For as long as it goes. <laughs> yeah. And, and just like with the bison and the cows, more cows die walking with the storm than bison do walking through it. So it's like, there's no guarantee that it's going to pass and you're going to be okay. You know, like you could be killed by this or it could ruin you. Part of, part of too. And I, and I want to make sure I don't miss this. I'm thinking of my, my wife's in my head right now and she's, she's saying air and being more compassionate. And, and I'm thinking the storm, just so you know, when you walk through the storm, I'm not talking about someone who's just like, you know, just gritting their teeth and just walking through. I'm talking about sometimes the work of walking through a storm is sitting down and crying with somebody like this yeah. sucks, right? Yeah. It really sucks. Like, and then a buddy coming over and it's like, yeah, I'm just going to sit silent with you right now. Yeah. Like, I'm here. That's the work yeah. of walking through the storm. Yeah. It's not always like lifting the weight and carrying it some more. Oftentimes it's really being brutally honest about where you're at, stopping, assessing, I wrote, I just thought to myself too, I need a rest right now. I, I can't run. I don't even have the muscles for it. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, resting is your job right now. You need to get your heart, your mind back so you can walk through it. But we're not giving up on walking through it. We're just, we're just making the intentional decisions right now so that you can make it through this as fast as yeah. possible. What a great counterbalance, man, mm-hmm. because it does, it, it does get pretty calloused and matter of fact pretty quickly, Mm -hmm. but you're right. Like the human element of it going Mm -hmm. back to like the meal thing, maybe the best thing you can do is just get some food in your body. 
Yeah. You know, if it's beating you up so bad, maybe you just need to climb under a rock and mm-hmm. like, or under a bush and mm-hmm. just sleep for a little Get some bit. Shelter. Yeah. Get some shelter for yeah. it. Recuperate, yeah. like take that tactical pause, take that moment to gird up whatever resources are available to you to recharge a little bit. Yep. The difference there is you're not assuming the problem's going to go away. Mm-hmm. The the difference there is you're doing what's actually necessary to get whatever you can in your grasp to begin moving forward again and solving the thing. And you're right. That could just be mourning through despair for a little bit. Absolutely. And allowing yourself to grieve so that you can remove that weight off yourself and then have a better chance of moving forward. Because if you're carrying 100 pounds and trying to weather the storm, it's a lot harder. So like to your point, maybe you just have to sit and cry. Yes. Maybe you just have to eat. Feel the loss of sleep. whatever it was. Yeah. Right? Grieve it. Yeah. And then when you get back up, say, I'm not going to carry this yep. because I have to solve something and I have to fix it. That to me is more, that to me is very much bison mentality. I don't want to d- discount that because I think the cow mentality is keep on going. And if you've ever been too tired and you've been doing some tasks, you just start dropping tools or you just everything injure yourself. Injure yourself. <clears throat> just, everything is that's easy is actually very difficult because mm-hmm. you're just tired. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just need to call up, like, I'm going to rest tomorrow. I'm going to be fresh. We've all had to make that decision. Hopefully, you know, you go, just be wise and go, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take this on tomorrow. And yep. then it's way better, mm-hmm. you know, but a cow is like, nah, I'm going to, you know, just don't think, uh, be a zombie and get through this. That's the right thing to do. I, I would beg to differ. I don't think you're, I don't think you're being more as intentional as you need to be. Yeah. You're it's, it's being in touch with the reality of your situation, mm-hmm. right? To me, it just goes back to if you're truly owning the circumstances you're in mm-hmm. and the reality of it, then you'll realize I maybe can't take another step right now. Mm-hmm. And that comes back to the compassion piece of what do I need to do to get the strength to start walking again mm-hmm. and to own it. And that's a very fair, very real thing, depending on what you're walking through. And, um, you know, on the human level, that's where it's like force a meal. You know, mm-hmm. get something in your body, yep. force rest. If you can't sleep, just put yourself in a peaceful situation to at least do the best you can at recuperation for a bit, you know, take a lap outside, take a walk, yeah. whatever that may be, mm-hmm. you know, if you have like get a hug, what, you know, if you can't get a hug, do whatever, whatever it is that you're like, this is the most important thing that in my mind is embracing the problem. Yep. It is pushing in because those are realities that need dealt with. Right. John, like John, if you if you texted me and say, "Hey, can we do lunch this week?" and I might go, "Hey, I, I'm busy." Yeah. You know, and but if you texted me and said, "I need a lunch this week," with then I'd be like, oh, "This is a priority." Yep. Like if I could, if, if you had just the courage to be like, "Look, I'm in trouble." I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like exactly. yeah, just to be yeah. like, just just for just one second, all you need is like five seconds of courage or of, of bravery, just to be like. I need to have coffee sent yeah. with that person that you need in well, your life, right? And it's interesting, too, because ugh, that that's such a good point, Aaron, because you can't assume that people are in your beck and call. <laughs> so if, like, you need support and you're like, I'm so alone, and it's like, hey, Aaron, can we have lunch this week? And you're like, God, oh, this week's not good, man. And then I'm all like, woe's me. No one's uh, here yeah. for me. He uh, doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. He doesn't care. The world doesn't care. Yeah. About me. The world. I'm yeah. so alone. <laughs> it's like, well, you, you didn't really give your buddy much of a chance to understand your circumstances, man. Like if it's like, I, I know, like if, if I ask him, you're like, no, this week's bad. It's like, all right. I really need lunch or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we make that happen. It's like, yeah. well, it, it's kind of incumbent on the, the asker if they have a need to make the need known. Mm-hmm. And then, like, if no one responds to it, it could be one of two things: either a) you've abused that cert- those yeah. relationships for so long right. that there's you don't have any equity in the relationship, and you've kind of put yourself in a bad situation, or b) maybe that person shouldn't be part of your inner circle. Mm-hmm. That's true, right? Yep, <clears throat> yeah. And, and when a friend's not available, I might just turn to a good book, you know, and some good other voices. I mean, we can borrow friendships, fresh perspective, right? Yeah, that that's a great way to to keep going through it. Like when I can't, I don't understand what to do next. There are voices. So many. We have yeah. no excuse. Really. Mo- motivational videos, any, anything. It's like, yeah, let's not drown our depression with sad music. 
<laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, like it's not just do- and watch depressing movies. Like if I'm depressed, what level of <laughs> industrial optimism can I stomach? Let's find that and absorb it. Right, right. Exactly. Even if it makes me angry hearing it, like let's let's put some positive counterbalance in my mind right now. You know, like, <laughs> goodness. Let's watch some Rocky or something. Come yeah, on. anything. <laughs> Spark that fire. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I go ahead. I'm sorry. No, what yeah. were you gonna say? Well, I I was gonna move to just another section. Yeah. that I don't want to forget about. Please, do. Are we good? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so the last uh, last thing to sum my mind is is one thing I think is really helpful, uh, at least in the work world, um, is to give yourself a finish line for something if you can. Mm. Okay. So uh, I hear it's, it's like the American way to brag about how busy is it. I actually, it's number one way to annoy me. If you guys want to just tell me how busy I'm busy, what does busy mean? We're all breathing. I mean, it's like, you know, you're alive, you're busy, whatever. I would, I would say challenge uh, busy with being more intentional about why you're busy and how you're pushing through things. And if, if you really want to accomplish something that's big, that's something you haven't done before, uh, give yourself a reward and a finish line. So let's say, for example, uh, I want to get a sales goal or something like that. That's like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. It's going to suck. It's going to be more hours. It's going to be more intentionality. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do things that are uncomfortable that I'm not normally doing. <laughs> I, I know they're uncomfortable because I haven't been doing them. Otherwise, I'd be at this this level, right? Yeah. But I can't run like that forever. I can't create a difficult situation like that without some kind of, I'm going to do it for this long or these are the rewards I'm going to have along the way. And I, I would call those sort of breaths. Yeah, um, they're restful. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, to me, the, the storm, uh, my favorite storms are the ones you make for yourselves, the ones that are going to test you. Yeah. You know, like I'm like, I'm, I'm intentionally putting this into my life. I know it's going to be hard, but I'm going to be friends with John. Um, (laughs) 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 Oh, that caught me off guard. (laughs) I got you. So, so I know this is going to have consequence, right? Yeah. Uh, positive consequence, but it'll be, it'll be consequence. As, as we go on that journey, though, there has to be some high fives along the way. Yeah. Some, hey, great job. You hit this benchmark, those kind of things. Um, plan vacations with your family. Yeah. Plan outings with your friends. It'll make that week so much more intentional. When you got a yeah. Saturday, you know you're going on a fishing trip or whatever. And if you're alone, <clears throat> plan something that you enjoy that especially if it can put you in connection with someone else. Yeah. Right. Like I had someone move recently and they're like, I don't know how to be friends. I've never moved. I'm alone. And they're just like going, they're not going anywhere. And they're just sitting there. I can't find, it's impossible to make friends. I was like, when have you left your house? Like, Have you? No. Oh, okay. Like to your point, if you're going through that thing, it's like, well, what do you love doing? I love, bingo or checkers or pottery or whatever find a group that does that and just build up the courage to reward yourself to go make pottery you may not meet anyone to start building that relationship if you're alone but you at least get to make a piece of pottery you love if that's your passion right and if you keep showing up you're going to start building relationships in that place and um I love the, what you're saying about you can't just go on forever it's Mm -hmm. like are you busy for the sake of busyness are you busy for the sake of engaging in value added efforts Mm -hmm. right i saw this post on facebook and it was like calling people out it's like hey can we stop wearing busyness and burnout as badges of honor yeah right it's hurting people right and it is it's 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 not healthy it's not healthy yeah and it's like well i'm someone who lives like you and i both are very industrious we Mm -hmm. spend a lot of time doing a lot of things but some of those tasks right and we won't go into this now Mm -hmm. maybe later Mm -hmm. but it's like you can rest while doing something if you're switching the venue up enough, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you work on a computer all day, you can, it can be restful and life-giving to do leather working or woodworking or whatever. So it's like, you can, that that's one aspect. But the other thing too, is that like, there is no pride or honor or fun in putting in 12 hour days for nothing, you know, 15 hour days, 18 hour mm-hmm. days for nothing. Who can, No one cares. You will die. No one will remember it. It's, it's not a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. It, the fruit of the tree, right? What you produce 
is the badge of value. Yes. You know, not the effort that's put into it. Right. Because this, to me, when people <clears throat> say they're busy, it's like, it's like bragging you're in the storm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought the goal was to get through the storm. Yeah. Right. So like, I would rather hear, uh, actually I've been working on this project. Yeah. I'm very excited. I'm writing this book or whatever it is. Um, or just getting through a work week and I'm trying to hit some goal or something like, uh, yeah, I'm busy doing this, but I'm a, uh, I think I'm about there. I, I these are the things I've accomplished along the way, and this is what I'm going to do just to reward myself. That's way more fun to talk about. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's like don't brag about I'm in the storm. It's like, hey, I want to I want to brag about what the storm is making me become. How yes. what's what's happening as I walk through this? Who who what I'm what I'm finding out about myself? Yep, walking through this. In a fun tongue in cheek analogy, right, is you and I don't focus on the time we put into creating this podcast. Mm -hmm. We don't, right. that, we don't, you don't care. I don't like, we yeah. care because we're spending the time. Yeah. But like, that is not a central thought in either of our minds, mm -hmm. right? What we're focusing on is the value of the conversation, yep. how it's making us better, and the really cool conversations it's sparking with people who are listening to it. Absolutely. You know? They don't care how much work we put into it. They care about was the conversation good or not. Right. <laughs> Just like you and me. Yep. It, that it's really was small. That profitable. Yeah. Was, that good? was that worth my time? Right. <laughs> Should I have listened to that? You know, so it, it's one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, so I let's instead of like I want to temper that walking through the storm is it. It's not just like us being tough. It's it's more sort of like this rhythm of life right there are storms and then there's the calm 100 storm and that calm can feel as good as you understood how bad the storm was and then what in what you found out about yourself now what are you going to do about what you've learned through the storm um let's let's have a different mentality about it like if there's something that is very challenging to do but you need to do it just just go just real, realize you forget this is going to be hard but i know that it's going to change me in some way <clears throat> and i think that get, brings us to a really good final preparation point right mm -hmm. make a plan or a system you can follow for when adversity strikes mm -hmm. right yes like the whole you revert to your baseline your, your most basic level of training and competence. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you improve that? You, you have a plan and you practice it, you make it a habit. But like, if you go into a negotiation, and have no goal, it's just like, I just want to cheat less. I just want cheaper. Right. Mm -hmm. They're going to clean your clock. Right. <laughs> right? If, if, if you put some preparation into like kind of the steps you want to carry through what your left and right limits that you've defined for yourself are like, mm -hmm. I won't go below this or above that, or I'll walk or whatever. You're so much better equipped. So it's kind of the same of like the next time I just get hit, by something and I'm flustered, I don't know what to do. And I'm sitting there, the second I connect the dots that I'm in that circumstance, I'm gonna go for a walk, mm. right? The okay. second I know I'm overwhelmed, the second I make the realization because it can take time, I'm gonna go for a walk. Billy, what, what did Billy say on our last podcast, the, the third second or the three second rule? Yeah, the, what, <laughs> what would you say? I think what he said was, um, if you're gonna respond at two seconds, what would you say if you waited till the third second? Exactly. Yeah. That, that was a great baseline for him. Like, yeah. Dude, that's a check for him, right? <laughs> I, I'm great. angry. I'm going to give myself an extra few seconds. Right. Too. <laughs> Am I responding from emotion or for yeah. the best interest of the circumstances and that I'm involved in? Yes. What a brilliant way to look at it, yeah. right? Because it's like, I'm overwhelmed. The world's spiraling around me. It's ending. I'm going to go for a walk outside. <laughs> you know what? It's probably not. But even though it feels like it, I'm just going to go for a walk. Yeah, yeah. And if I get back and I'm still spiraling, my plan is to eat something, it, even right. if I'm sick to my stomach, mm -hmm. even if it's an ice cream sundae. Mm -hmm. Like if I can get it in my body, I'll get it in my body. Right. right? And it's like, maybe that's basically but build that plan. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm going to go for that walk. And mm -hmm. then when I get back from that walk, I'm going to write down the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that could be, if you set up just one or two steps to help engage with it. That can change how you engage with in the future. Maybe you have to change your plan for something that works better, but at least you're equipped with something that you know you can do. It's like, how much more, how much better do you feel if it's like, um, you're lost, you're overwhelmed, you have nothing to, you have no idea what to do next. And now you're lost and you're overwhelmed and you know that the next step is to go for a walk. 
completely unrelated, but gives you yeah. agency. It gives you ownership. It gives you the ability to begin taking control. Absolutely. <clears throat> That's so, that is great, John. Cause, <clears throat> cause then you get used to, you get used to how a storm feels. Mm -hmm. You can kind of go, Oh, this is okay. This is familiar to me. I know what difficulty feels like. I need to start. Okay. Now I need to start checking the light or the, the dashboard. Mm -hmm. How am I doing? Okay. What now? Okay. Here's my contingencies. Here's what happens when I start running out of breath. Yep. Well, te temper me here. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I may need some temperance or some added context. So help me out. <laughs> um, everyone's like, oh, no. <laughs> no. Well, out of bounds, John. Stop. Yep. Stop now. Know. Please stop. <laughs> what happens when the worst happens? Right. Mm -hmm. So like I spent, I don't dwell on this. It, it does not consume me. Mm -hmm. But I spend some time intentionally on a rhythmic basis that I've set up for myself girding my mind up for what if the worst possible thing that c I could imagine happens to me happen, right? That's not me dying. Mm -hmm. That's not me becoming crippled, right? Those would be bad things. That's good to have an idea of like, how do I care? That's not what you value most. I know but that, what do you, right? yeah, what do you value most? So for me, yeah. it's like my wife and children. Yes. Of course. So like what, <clears throat> and, and I don't, like I said, I don't go on this. I don't do it often, right. but it's good to just put those. What are my first steps? Yep. If everything is destroyed, what would I do if an officer showed up at the door and is like, I have terrible news for you. Everyone was just lost in a car crash, mm. you know, um, or I get that call or something. What am I going to do? I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be capable of doing anything mm. industrious. Mm -hmm. So the plan I've created, if God forbid something like that should ever happen to me is I'm going to just force myself to start dialing. Mm hmm whoever is geographically closest to me yep. because I can't, I know I won't be able to trust myself in that circumstance because yep. I'm going to be completely breathed in shock. You'll have no muscles. And by, You'll yeah. somebody else's. And by continuing yeah. to make that be my first yep. step, I'm conditioning myself to hopefully, if God forbid that would happen, I just do it without thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, and the second, the rest of the plan is just to not break protocol. And what yep. do I mean by that? It's if that would happen, I'd call someone immediately, my father, my friend, my whoever, mm -hmm. um, I just call and be like, I just, this is what just happened. Click that, you know, that's all I could probably say. Right. Everyone's gone. Yeah. Click like, you know, and then I would do my best to still work out to like whatever my morning, my daily rhythm is. I just try to keep moving. Right. Mm -hmm. And because that's all you can do because I like, I'd have to tend the animals. I have to do these other things. So my plan, if something God forbid like that would happen is, you're right down the street, give you a call. This is what happened. And then I would, to the best of my ability, continue following the routine of what my normal life is that's not affected by that loss mm -hmm. because I know I'm going to just be a zombie and broken, right? Because the worst thing just happened and it's going to take time to recover through that. But I also know that the only way to even hope of recovering on any level is by not stopping and drowning in a bottle or killing myself or mm -hmm. ceasing, but by mm -hmm. continuing forward on whatever capacity is possible. Yes. So it's kind of, it, you know, it's kind of dark, but like, if you just set up that premise, it's like, okay, I know it's going to break me. I know it's going to be shocking, but at least I have the, the craziest idea of how not to just die on the spot mm -hmm. or cease living, Yeah. you know? And, and you'd have to, I, I guess you'd have to think too, like if that happened, you would have cause to continue living. Because like, what would your spouse or kids want? They'd want you to keep going, you know? Absolutely. So it's, it's a little bit dark, but it's like, if, it, if you create that plan to respond to whatever it is, whether it's just going for the walk, right? I'm going to call and just start walking. Yeah. Right. And just not that that's my plan. That's maybe that's all the plan is right. Initially, it at least girds you with something that keeps some level of agency as the realization of the depth of anguish begins to sink in. And it also gets you away from potentially more dangerous, isolated positions. <laughs> no, no, let's talk about having a flat tire. What yeah. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it, it gets a perspective, right? You know, it does. Yeah. And, and it, 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 yeah, it's all relative. So we, we have a, the severity though, that it does allow you to think, okay, what would I have to do when I'm, in a situation where I had to be the most conditioned to react in the, in, the, in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, that is a preparation mindset because yeah. it, cause you, you absolutely know in that circumstance, it is going to be crushing. What will you do? 
right? Oh, infinitely. Yeah. You're gone, man. Uh, <laughs> everything's over. Like exactly. everything's different now. But <laughs> so. I, uh, I, I have a, and then on the other side of the spectrum, I have a 15 year old who's uh, learning how to drive. <laughs> And so I'm right away thinking about all the things that can go wrong, right? Yeah. From a dad's perspective, you know. Um, but rather than, you know, seed her with all these, this is going to happen, this and being negative, rather I just want to prepare her for it. So I'm like, before she gets on the road, she's going to learn how to, to change a tire, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what you got to do, right? You know, she's going to understand. Uh, she's going to, I, I, I'll tell her that expect that other people around her got. <laughs> imagine this, but some people on the road don't know how to drive very well, right? Huh. Assume that's going to happen. Yeah. You know, I don't want to, don't get mad about it. Just know that, you know, I actually just assume people are bad drivers out there and then it just helps me. It's when safer they that way. When they, when they, cut, <laughs> when they cut me off and go, yeah, that's a bad driver. <laughs> and oftentimes we are those bad drivers. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm that guy, right? Or it's a friend like, oh, that's so glad I didn't. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was John. I just, uh, well, he did cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, but to me, uh, preparing your mind for difficulty that will come. Yep. Not to be passive, pessimistic, just more. That's I'm just used to it. Like you get used to this is what this is what difficulty feels like. Yep. This is how we respond to it. Well, and, and to that, to t- like a good boundary on what I just shared. Um, there's no value in going any further than I just explained in this conversation, mm-hmm. right? Like, okay, I go for a walk and I call Aaron or Billy or my dad or whoever's mm-hmm. close, right? Mm-hmm. Or whoever will show up, mm-hmm. um, and I'm gonna walk. Right. All right. That's what I'll do. There's no value in continuing to dwell on that worst case scenario. Right, There's right. no value in starting to fantasize about further steps. Right. That's right. that's where it gets really crazy and unhealthy. Mm-hmm. But it's just like that initial. I'm not going to go inside and pour a drink mm-hmm. or grab a gun. Right. 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 I'm going to go for a walk and call someone who cares about me. Exactly. Um, yeah. and, and that's the end of it. And, and the other thing to context, like you did with the, the tire, it's like if you if you take the courage to do that basic exercise uh-huh. how much easier is it now to tackle the okay my daughter's going to drive <laughs> i want her to know how to tire this is so much better <laughs> this is so infinitely less painful to think about than right. these other things right <laughs> it's, it's the insanity that we all do and this, this is like with working out or uh, work stuff or education or anything yeah is that why am i changing a tire when i don't need to change a tire correct well because it's going to happen yes like just you gotta, you gotta understand that this training is a gift. It is. When the storm comes, you're gonna be like, I got this. Saving that thousand dollars or whatever is a gift when the tires blow out. Heck yeah. Or your toilet needs fixed or whatever. If do you can't fix it. Do you know how much of a boss I felt like in high school because my dad made me do that? It didn't happen in my car. It happened to uh, friends. So yeah. Guess what? You're the hero for the day. So the preparation Changing is. Changing the tire. Yeah. 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 So it's like, it's not always the storm you get. It's somebody else's that you're preparing for. That is a, that, that's a life worth living. Well, and that's back to the community piece, right? Right. Um, when, when you're walking in community and, and you're, you're trying to build all that. Yeah. What you're equipping yourself for, you may never need for yourself. Right. But what happens if, what happens if your buddy gets notification of a divorce? Yeah. Right. And you're prepared to go for a walk and thing. It's okay, brother, go for a walk. I'm on my way. Mm-hmm. Right. They just got crushed. It's not, you know, it you, borrow my contingency plan, borrow my, <laughs> yeah. Borrow what I thought up yeah. and we will get through this together. And, and yeah. that's probably the last thought I have. I'd like to, mm-hmm. to leave with is this is not the lone wolf thing. This is not mm-hmm. the lone vice. And those guys die when the adversity strikes. If you're alone, get as quickly as you can to building community, right. Yeah. To surrounding yourself with those who do care. Cause if you really think and look for it, there's, a good chance that someone does care that you can begin fostering that relationship with and investing in and building equity in. Because like you said, your buddy may not know how to change that tire, but if you do, you just took a tragedy for them that could keep them on the side of the road for hours. And you made it a hiccup that took 15 minutes because you're looking out for each other. And that's where the value of and beauty of life comes in those with whom you surround and share life with. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to, let's all, Think about how we could be bison, how we could be the the type of person that prepares and is ready for and will instinctually walk through the storm yep. together uh, and then avoid that mentality and, and understand when it's happening. Even in the storm, am I acting like a cow right now? Am I, am it's, I hanging out? What would, <laughs> what would a bison do? What would a bison do? What would a bison do? Let's make bracelets. Yes. <laughs> I know a leather guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, 
I think, uh, John, what a great discussion. Yeah. Uh, be, enjoy the, the wild freedom that comes from being a bison, but the, the, the intentionality moves the storm rather than being a domesticated, predictable cow that does not really yeah. push back, uh, on that storm. Yeah. Embrace life and live it fully, right? Absolutely. That was another episode of The Grit Theory. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and let us know. If you did not like what you heard, keep it to yourself. We hope that you got at least a few nuggets that you want to share. We look forward to seeing your comments below. Thank you so much for joining us today. Take care.